Long Distance, Part 2, by Tony Harrison. Though my mother was already two years dead, Dad kept her slippers warming by the gas, put hot water bottles her side of the bed, and still went to renew her transport pass. You couldn't just drop in, you had to phone. He'd put you off an hour to give him time To clear away her things and look alone As though his still raw love was such a crime He couldn't risk my blight of disbelief Though sure that very soon he'd hear her key Scrape in the rusted lock and end his grief He knew she'd just popped out to get the tea I believe life ends with death, and that is all. You haven't both gone shopping, just the same. In my new black leather phone book, there's your name, and the disconnected number I still call. The Bridge of Sighs by Thomas Hood One more unfortunate, weary of breath, Rashly importunate, gone to her death. Take her up tenderly, lift her with care. Fashioned so slenderly, young and so fair. Look at her garments, clinging like cerements, whilst the wave constantly drips from her clothing. Take her up instantly, loving, not loathing. Touch her not scornfully, think of her mournfully, gently and humanly, not of the stains of her, all that remains of her now is pure womanly. Make no deep scrutiny into her mutiny, rash and undutiful, past all dishonour, death has left on her only the beautiful. Still, for all slips of hers, one of Eve's family. Wipe those poor lips of hers, oozing so clamorly. Loop up her tresses, escaped from the comb, her fair auburn tresses, whilst wonderment guesses, where was her home? Who was her father? Who was her mother? Had she a sister? Had she a brother? Or was there a dearer one, still, and a nearer one, yet than all other? Alas for the rarity of Christian charity under the sun! Oh, it was pitiful, near a whole city full, home she had none! Sisterly, brotherly, fatherly, motherly, feelings had changed. Love, by harsh evidence, thrown from its eminence, even God's providence seeming estranged. Where the lamps quiver, so far in the river, with many a light, from window and casement, from garret to basement, she stood with amazement, houseless by night. The bleak wind of March made her tremble and shiver, but not the dark arch or the black flowing river, Mad from life's history, glad to death's mystery, swift to be hurled anywhere, anywhere out of the world. In she plunged boldly, no matter how coldly the rough river ran, over the brink of it, picture it, think of it, dissolute man, lave in it, drink of it, then if you can, take her up tenderly. Lift her with care, fashion so slenderly, young and so fair. Ear her limbs frigidly, stiffen too rigidly, decently, kindly, smooth and compose them, and her eyes close them, staring so blindly, dreadfully staring, through muddy impurity, as when with the daring, 
last look of despairing, fixed on futurity. Perishing gloomily, spurred by contumely, cold inhumanity, burning insanity, into her rest. Cross her hands humbly, as if praying dumbly, over her breast. Owning her weakness, her evil behaviour, and leaving with meekness her sins to her saviour. A quoi bon dire? By Charlotte Mew. Seventeen years ago you said something that sounded like goodbye. And everybody thinks that you are dead, but I. So I, as I grow stiff and cold, to this and that say goodbye too. And everybody sees that I am old, but you. And one fine morning in a sunny lane, some boy and girl will meet and kiss and swear that nobody can love their way again. While over there, you will have smiled, I shall have tossed your hair. The Morning After I Killed Myself by Meggie Royer The morning after I killed myself, I woke up. I made myself breakfast in bed. I added salt and pepper to my eggs and used my toast for a cheese and bacon sandwich. I squeezed a grapefruit into a juice glass. I scraped the ashes from the frying pan and rinsed the butter off the counter. I washed the dishes and folded the towels. The morning after I killed myself, I fell in love. Not with the boy down the street or the middle school principal. Not with the everyday jogger or the grocer who always left the avocados out of the bag. I fell in love with my mother and the way she sat on the floor of my room holding each rock from my collection in her palms until they grew dark with sweat. I fell in love with my father down at the river as he placed my note into a bottle and sent it into the current. With my brother who once believed in unicorns but who now sat in his desk at school, trying desperately to believe I still existed. The morning after I killed myself, I walked the dog. I watched the way her tail twitched when a bird flew by, or how her pace quickened at the sight of a cat. I saw the empty space in her eyes when she reached a stick and turned around to greet me so we could play catch, but saw nothing but sky in my place. I stood by as strangers stroked her muzzle, and she wilted beneath their touch like she did once for mine. The morning after I killed myself, I went back to the neighbor's yard, where I left my footprints in concrete as a two-year-old and examined how they were already fading. I picked a few daylilies and pulled a few weeds and watched the elderly woman through her window as she read the paper with the news of my death. I saw her husband spit tobacco in the kitchen sink and bring her her daily medication. The morning after I killed myself, I watched the sun come up. Each orange tree opened like a hand and the kid down the street pointed out a single red cloud to his mother. The morning after I killed myself, I went back to that body in the morgue and tried to talk some sense into her. I told her about the avocados and the stepping stones, the river and her parents. I told her about the sunsets and the dog and the beach. The morning after I killed myself, I tried to unkill myself, but couldn't finish what I started. 